Hey everybody, <clears throat> welcome to our virtual tour and live presentation of the Pure and Original Color Collection hey. Upside Down. Uh, my name is Iris Floor and I am Creative Director at Pure and Original. Um, before we start the tour, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the brand Pure and Original. Uh, we are a Dutch paint brand and we have a collection of different paint types which are all water-based, tinted with organic and mineral pigments uh, and are available in over 160 colors. We are most known for our Classico chalk-based paint. Thank you, Siri! <laughs> um, uh, Classico is a mother wall paint uh, and it is the perfect base for every interior. Uh, the Classico is also used in the upside down house, so you will be seeing it in, uh, in a few moments. Uh, another uh, paint type is the Fresco Lime paint. This is 100% uh, mineral uh, paint and it has beautiful uh, color nuances. You can also see it here. This is the uh, Fresco Lime paint. You can see the nuances in the, in the color. Um, I'm not going to tell you about all our paint types. I think it's nice to uh, move on to the tour. Um, but before we go uh, to the tour, um, I'm going to invite Dagny. She has uh, designed the colors for the Upside Down house and she will tell a little bit about the, uh, the colors she picked and why she has chosen them. So I will invite her. So, good morning, Iris, and hello, everyone. Uh, it's really nice to be here and so exciting to finally launch this project that we've worked on for so long and so many years. Uh, and I am uh, the owner of Koi Color Studio. We work with developing color um, palettes and color design for architecture and interiors and products actually across the world. And working for a pure and original is one of our favorite projects uh, for sure. And it's a, um, a collaboration that has been going on for several years. So for those of you who do not know pure and original and who are um, uh, joining in from uh, my account. Uh, this is Iris from above, above me. Uh, say hello. Hi. <laughs> um, uh, and it's really important that if you want to see the live tour of uh, uh, the Upside Down House, you need to follow the Pure and Original Press account for that later on because I will log out after this. So it has been a real pleasure to work with this project and with Iris and also Siri, who you'll be meet, meeting after. Um, and uh, an, an old building like the London Victorian Row House that has so many interesting architectural qualities that we really wanted to implement or, or at least work on and reference. Uh, and I have uh, all of the colors that we used in the house in front of me, I'm gonna hold them up. There's 16 in total. So there's a lot of colors in this house. Here you see all of the colors that we've used in the upside down house and also the upside down collection. So the real challenge here has been, you know, how to make these colors work together in such a high number of colors. Uh, and we have one of my favorite colors too, right, Iris? <laughs> this is one that we've been talking about a lot. If you look at this, uh, the pigments are really intense. And this is a color that it's called blue. Uh, and it's not possible to make with a traditional paint with plastic pigments. So the advantage of using mineral pigments makes it possible to make create colors like these. But it's not like the most common wall color i would say uh, but we've used it actually on a wall and also on a ceiling and i also have it on my office door behind me it's a, a huge favorite 
And another color that's a big favorite for me is this one. This is called Old Ochre. And I forgot to say, if you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to type them in below here and I'll try to answer them as we um, move on. There's a little bit of a delay, but I'm able to answer questions. Uh, and if we look at the home, uh, this uh, 130 year old building, uh, and, uh, the original Victorian houses or in that era, they had a really complex use of colors. And we wanted to reference that in this project and use some of the same complexity, uh, but in a more modern manner. Uh, and here you can see uh, some of the uh, color meetings. You see, there's a lot of colors going on, but as you will see in the house tour, it will really calm down when you walk in there. So it's not a hectic feeling. Um, and it doesn't re really feel like that much when you're in there, but there is also though, 16 colors in this house. Uh, and if we start looking at the front living room, uh, this is a mix of a new and old color. So the newest color, maybe you can explain a little bit about that one, Iris. That's soft flamingo. Yes, soft flamingo right. is a is a quite new color. We launched it uh, last year, and it's a uh, it's a very soft pink with a little bit of orange in it. In it, it's a very uh, warm tint, uh, and it's not too hard. It's really soft, but it's not a sweet soft pink like a pastel, but it is a color with power, but still soft. It's very, it's very nice. Yeah, it's almost like, oh, that's my daughter, Indy. She says, looking good. <laughs> Thank you, Indy. I love you. <laughs> uh, what's interesting with the soft flamingo, it's like, it's, it's a little bit of a pink, but it's all, also a bit terracotta-ish. Uh, so it's a really interesting nuance that I know is going to have a really strong place in Pure Original Color Collection for a number of years. So it's a safe color. But what I also wanted to talk about with this room is the purple uh, windows. Because we have uh, soft flamingo walls and we have nutmeg powder on the moldings uh, and the ceiling rows, um, which is kind of like it's pretty, it's, it's not that extraordinary. And we wanted to do some bold choices in here as well to reference uh, the Victorian era. But like I said earlier, in a more modern manner. So this purplish blue, it's called Greek key. So it looks a lot softer on the little sample uh, and it's stronger on the actual uh, windows, but it's such an interesting color. And I know that we're going to see a lot of this also in the future on walls, kitchens, everything. Uh, it's such an interesting choice. And then we're going to move on to like the TV room or the back uh, living room, which has probably one of my favorite pure and original colors. Uh, it's called old ochre. Um, and maybe Iris, you can explain why. This is such a special color. Yes, it's a very complex color. Uh, it is a quite um, historical color and an older color. That's why it's called old ochre. It's a uh, it's a, a deeper color than the, the new ochre we also have. It's um, a lot more warm and a little bit brownish, but still, it's quite yellow and it moves during the day with different sunlight. Uh, and it's really intense color, but at the same time, it is very calming and relaxing color. Um, it's it's a really special color, and I totally understand why it's your favorite color. Because uh, even people who don't like yellow, I did not like yellow many years ago. Yeah. But if you see this color and you are in that room or you have... Uh, the, uh, a similar color uh, in your room. It's amazing what the color will do for uh, for how you feel and how the, the room looks. Yeah, because this is uh, a color that almost has more paint pigment than paint in the bucket, uh, which gives it a really deep look, like multiple layers and a depth that's so interesting. 
um, when you're in the room. So it, yellow is usually like an energetic color. Um, and this old ochre is relaxing. You just want to dive in and be in that room and enjoy life. <laughs> uh, and Siri has also said that, you know, people that visit and doesn't really like yellow, like Iris, they love this room and they want to stay. Um, and we wanted to have that feeling where you have like the fresh front room uh, and you have the deep and delicious yellow in the back uh, living room. And uh, I'm not showing photos of uh, the kitchen here, but Siri will give you the tour. And here you can see the yellow that we've used in the kitchen compared to the yellow that we have in the TV um, lounge room. So this is like a fresh morning yellow. Well, this is the deep one where you want to relax. So this is perfect to wake up to and you feel awake and you feel happy. While here you're still happy, but you want to relax and enjoy and maybe take a cocktail and live life. So if we're continuing with the photos that I wanted to talk about, uh, we have uh, two bedrooms. Uh, I actually wanted to show all of them, but I, I think it's uh, important to get the live tour and just a look in the feel of the house um, uh, with Siri later on. Uh, and this is the first kids room. There are two kids room and I wanted to show both, but again, the time. Uh, and this is Odin's bedroom, uh, one of Sirius uh, and Adrian, of course, you're also here, uh, one of their sons. Uh, we have a really relaxing wall color, uh, which is called sea moss. Um, and it gives such a good atmosphere. It's good for both play uh, reading, studying, and also sleep. Um, and what I find interesting about this room is how Siri has incorporated both modern architecture and the traditional qualities uh, of um, uh, the house. Uh, and I wanted to enhance that modern, those modern features with a color that kind of popped, which is, here is the blue. So here you see the blue and green together. It's a, a calm green color, good for sleep. And then you have this blue, it's just called blue, but it can remind of Yves Klein blue or electric blue or, you know, those really sharp and strong and delicious colors. And I wouldn't uh, normally recommend these in a bedroom, but since it's up here and it's actually invisible from, from his bed, uh, it's perfect. So it's the perfect little surprise. You can't see it when you enter the room, you have to, go over to the swing and the dead little monkey lying on the floor. That was a big discussion when we took the photos, whether they should be here or not. So we actually have a photo without the dead monkey too, but I love, I love the dead monkey. <laughs> um, and from the windows, I, from the outside, you can also see uh, the blue, which is like a really interesting feature, I think. But if we look at the uh, bedroom for the grown-ups or the adult bedroom. Ask your question. All... Yes. The lower ceiling, it looks quite white, but it's not white. No, we never do white ceilings because white ceilings uh, have too high of a contrast uh, towards the rest of the colors, which will make it feel kind of messy um, and uh, too hectic. So we have um, uh, sea moss and kiwi white, which is a, a green white. Uh, so it's it's a paler color than sea moss just because we wanted a little bit of freshness into this room because the kid will be doing his homework here as well. So we need more light in. Uh, but with the adults, you're not going to do homework in here uh, and you're not going to play. So we went all in with a really dark color. Uh, and this is Black Hills looks like this. It's a really deep shade of green. It's a little bit cold. Um, oh, thank you. I'm happy that you like the contrast be between the green and the strong blue. Uh, it's a really interesting color to work with. And you can also work with it with a number of different colors. Here it's with soft flamingo. You can't really see them together, but it's an equally interesting mix. Um, so back to this darker bedroom. 
Uh, there's an important reason for why we gone for dark for the parents and lighter color for the kids. So both of the kids have lighter colors. And that is because we know that we sleep better in dark rooms. Um, so um, choosing a dark color for your bedroom will uh, most likely provide you with better sleep. Uh, but this is not a good idea if you're going to play and do homework, etc. So we reserve the dark colors for areas where you only sleep. Uh, but black hills, shades of green and blue, and lavender are really good for sleep. So um, uh, this is um, definitely black hills, a color that we can recommend. So Mokis is asking, how long did this process take from start to finish? Um, the color design itself, took a couple of months um, while um, uh, the process of extending the house, the, extend, the house was extended upwards, sidewards, and downwards. That took maybe, a, I don't know, a year or two. Siri can explain more about that after. But Siri, um, how about the ceiling in this room? Um, this is the ceiling. So when we go, when we use dark colors in bedrooms, uh, it's really important to uh, do dark in the ceilings as well. Uh, and that is because uh, that will give that incredibly cozy and warm um, feeling of a little cave that you can go in and dive in and sleep uh, and enjoy yourself. And then you enter lightness because when we look at the bedroom or no the bathroom that's adjoining uh, right next to this bedroom it's really light in the colors so siri will show you that after we also have uh, the walk-in closet which is polar blue which is also super elegant um, color towards um, black hills but uh, in some bedrooms, we use uh, a different quality of paint than Classico, which is like stronger. Can you explain a little bit about that, Iris? Yes, we have also used uh, Lichetto, uh in the, uh, the lower hallway and in the bathrooms. And the Lichetto is, uh, well, it looks a little bit like the Classico. It is the same matte uh, finish but it is uh, stronger and it is also washable. So it is really nice to use in the kitchen or in the hallway or you can also use it in a kid's room or some places you know you will be hanging your wet coat or you have to clean it in the kitchen or something. And it's a uh, very practical paint. Yeah, it's really, it's really practical. So if you have areas where you know that there will be fingerprints or uh, scrubbing or whatever, use the Lichetto quality. Um, so this is what I had for now, and it's really important that if you want to see the actual house, this live will quit, so it will be shut down, and it will start again on the pure and original paint press account, which is Iris up here. So in a yeah. few minutes, the uh, CD yes. will be back on. We will close this one, um, and then you can tap again on the, the play button, as you did to open this live session, you, if you do that again, you will see uh, Siri and she will start the, the tour. So please keep watching and thank you for watching this live session. And then we will be back in, uh, in just a minute. Thank you so much. Bye. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm going to stand here on my steps. Uh, on my little London home in Highgate. Oh, that's my sister. Okay, so people start coming in. It feels really nice to have some people I know. Hi, Dangni. Okay, so um, I guess there are some people that uh, will be coming over from the other session. So I will start to talk a little bit about the background of this project uh, on my steps here before uh, I move inside. So my name is uh, Siri Zanelli. I'm an architect. I'm Norwegian. I uh, am a partner in an architectural firm called Collective Works here in London. We design um, beautiful and responsible buildings and about half of what we do is um, residential and domestic work. So we also do some cultural and some hospitality work, but about half of what we of our projects are uh, for homeowners. We love designing bespoke homes for uh, for people and um, 
of course, because we practice in London, a lot of what we do are alterations to existing and historic buildings like the one um, I can show you. I can give you a little sneak peek of my street. It's a typical London street with um, Victorian terraces with their bay windows. Um, and we bought this house because, of course, uh, as an architect, I needed a project. Um, it uh, needed a lot of work underpinning. We found newspaper clippings from the Vietnam War under the carpets. Um, we had uh, uh, it, basically we had to go back to brick and the lard and plaster in so many rooms. So one of the ladies previously asked, "How long did the process take?" Well, the, we started on site in May 2018. We moved in this summer, but I had to send my kids to Norway because the construction site wasn't safe for the children to live in. Um, and then I would say that around Christmas time we finally finished and now we're stuck with all the little snags that everyone that's on a house project has done. But anyway, I um, so at Collective Works, we've done quite a few colorful projects. And I think when you embark on your own grand design, you want to push it even further. So what you do, you contact the absolute best people you can imagine. And for me, that was contacting um, Farge Dagni, uh, as I knew her by uh, then. I contacted Koi uh, Color Studio and I said, I have got um, a really interesting project. I love your work. She already followed me on Instagram as well because we, um, we did get to know each other there. And I said, are you up for a collaboration? And she, uh, in very pl plain language said, if you want to work with me, you have to be bold and you have to use pure and original paints. Uh, and uh, as I said, uh, I really wanted to push the color scheme a lot further. And I've learned so much from working with her. And I think um, as an architect, it's been really interesting to see how the colors in this project really makes the uh, modern extensions to the historic building where we really have tried to celebrate the historic features sing so i will now um take you inside so we're going to start um with the hallway and what i'm going to do i'm going to talk a bit to the camera like this and then i'm also going to turn the camera around to really show you um to show you what it looks like so come on in and thank you so much for following two seconds so um here we are this is, oh, hi, Nina. Uh, this is uh, the long and narrow, uh, oh, I see lots of friends coming in, it makes me happy. It takes my nervousness away. Um, this is the, uh, the hallway, obviously. In Victorian terraces, they are very long uh, and narrow, and then often dark. In the hallway, um, uh, Dangni chose a Marrakesh finish on the walls which is uh, a textured, almost like a uh, Tadalakti finish. So you can see that it has, it, it, it has texture and it has shine. The color is called green room. So it's quite a grayish green, but this, um, this green continues all the way up to the loft. So you can see how the color will ch changes with, uh, when the light comes into the top of the building. Um, a lot of the historic features had to be reinstated. And this is a combination of two different greens and a bluish green. So we've got sea moss in the ceiling and then we've got poetic blue on the period features. And then the Marrakesh finish, uh, I think is super practical because when we come stumbling in here with loads of um, uh, backpacks and school gear, obviously I've tidied up the hallway this morning, uh, then it doesn't scuff uh, the walls. And yes, it does reflect the light um, really well. And this is also uh, polished with an Italian wax. So you can see the light at the end of the corridor there that uh, the light comes in. So the hallway is fully green throughout. And then I will take you down to the kitchen, I think. So I'm gonna, just gonna close this door. Um, <clears throat> so, the kitchen in this house, when we bought it, was one long and dark and very narrow room with only one window. 
In the Victorian terraces, the kitchens are generally towards the gardens, to the rear. And this is where I wanted to really create the heart of the home. So I wanted to make this long, gully, dark uh, place of a kitchen into a place where we want to spend all our time. So this is where we punched through the walls of the existing building fabric. And then we have added um, modern extensions to really let the light and, and the garden in. And the garden is kind of in the making. So I will turn the camera around and walking down the staircase. And this is the kitchen. So you, what you can see here <clears throat> is that it's a really rich material palette of um, exposed uh, brick, uh, exposed timber. There's two types of brick and there are also two types of timber. And uh, when I was uh, creating the material palette here, uh, I wanted to make sure that the materials themselves were strong enough that I didn't have to add loads of extra uh, features. And I gave Dagny the samples of elm, terrazzo, brick and Douglas fir. Uh, and I said that, well, there aren't that many colors actually that we need to uh, add in the kitchen. So we've got a wall over there. And then we've got my little favorite part of this room. So the light is incredibly bright today, a little snug hair. And I think um, in a lot of these places with all these materials, maybe the natural choice would be to just go with a grayish or a whitish color because the materials themselves are so um, rich. But uh, Dangni proposed this uh, yellow color in the Classico finish, which is called Pop. And this is a really bright day. So of course it's bright and nicer anyway, but um, uh, but the um, uh, on rainy days, which there are, of course, many of in London, uh, this yellow really makes the sunshine in this uh, in this kitchen. Um, and then I, I want to show you this place because when I designed, so for me, it was really important to have a little window seat. I want to have a place where I can drink my tea in peace every morning and then sit and have a glass of wine in the evening. And I had planned to have a similar Douglas fir frame on the ceiling light uh, as on the window. So kind of these two timber boxes. But when I came in, when the painter had just started and he had painted the ceiling and the ceiling reveal um, in the hop yellow, I just loved the way that the yellow looked different on the two, um, on the two angled surfaces. So I, um, so I said, I called the joiner and I said, okay, stop, don't, uh, don't, um, uh, don't make the, the timber frame because I don't think we need it. So anyway, so this is, uh, how I think, uh, I'm going to turn around and I'll talk you through it. Um, so I think this is an example of how, uh, colors also work really, really, really well with, um, like, a a uh, strong material palette and with uh, modern architecture. I'm going to show you one more view, which I enjoy. The light is a bit difficult today, but I'm going to turn around. So here you can see the um, the hallway down to the basement and then the hallway up to the rest of the house where I just walked, uh, where I just walked down. And in the in the left, you, there is a dark green called olive drab and it's painted in the Lichetto finish, which is the wipeable one. And then to the right, it's the uh, green room Marrakesh finish, which is the uh, um, the finish that goes through all of the hallway, which is the Tadalakti um, finish. So that is that one. And we've got elm and Douglas fir. And in between the Douglas fir louvers, we also have olive um, drab color. And then we've got a different green here and some oak joinery. So now I will take you up to um, the living rooms, which you saw the pictures of uh, uh, when Dagny was talking. And I think um, the interesting thing for me about the, the yellow room or the TV room as we call it, is that in Victorian terraces, that is a, a room which is often quite forgotten because it's not the front living room, which has the bay window to the street. And it doesn't have garden access uh, often, that's just from the kitchen. So it becomes a bit of a dark uh, forgotten room and I didn't want any forgotten rooms in my house. I want to make sure that everything had uh, a proper purpose. 
So because it's like the, the, the darker room, we thought, okay, let's make it a proper family snug TV room. And um, Dani firmly uh, made it ochre. And um, as she mentioned when she was talking about the color, that it's so intense with pigments. Uh, that's got more pigment than paint and when uh, the paint buckets arrived she actually told me uh, that I could eat the paint if I wanted to it wouldn't make me sick because it's so natural so uh, anyway I saved it for the walls and the doors uh, and then I will now take you into that yellow room two seconds so here we are isn't it nice? So this is the fully ochre um, TV room. So this is the um, uh, the matte finish, uh, and it's the matte um, it's the matte uh, classical finish on the walls, on the cornices, on the period features, and obviously in the ceiling. I mean, if you had done this in a uh, white ceiling, it would not look this nice, definitely not. And then it's also um, on the woodwork. So the woodwork is the traditional paint uh, finish and you can see that it's a little bit uh, glossy. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's the same color but it's glossier, uh, so it's wipeable and it makes it more, uh, more sturdy. Um, yes, the ceiling, as I, I think I get the comments a bit la uh, late, but the ceiling is definitely the same color, which is super important. And I think also here, uh, I'm going to show you a view which I really enjoy. Um, that is the one that you also see some of the pictures you can see. So basically this room was not connected to the other room. So we added those uh, doors, so they're bespoke. Uh, but the doors all take the colors of their rooms. Uh, so some of these doors, you know, this one, for example, is CMOS on the outside and then it's all ochre um, on the inside. But this is obviously what Dagny meant when she said that if you want to work with me, you have to be brave. I um, wasn't, uh, I wasn't too worried about the yellow or the ochre, the old ochre, but when Dagny presented the color scheme for the um, uh, for the front room, so that is the main uh, kind of living room of the house. But um, when we work uh, with these terraces, we often see that that front room becomes a bit forgotten because every all the families they just end up spending time in the uh, kitchen or kitchen living room. So we decided we want to use this front room as a home office, which obviously works quite well now that everyone has to work from home all the time. Um, but um, because also it's, it's a beautiful room with excellent um, historic features and that was one of the few rooms that we didn't decide the colour scheme for when we were uh, together. Damni and I, Damni came to London and we had a workshop in the studio and she came on site. But the front room, she said, no, nah, I'm going to have a think about that one uh, because I need to come up with something quite stunning. And then she sent me the suggestions of the soft flamingo, soft Greek and nutmeg powder, which in essence quickly looks like pink, blue and beige. And I went, ooh, really? And I remember that she said, well, if you want to work with me, you have to be brave. Um, and uh, my husband's quite flexible. So he's like, okay, we're having a pink bed living room then, fine. Um, but anyway, I think it works really well. Uh, but I, it's definitely an acquired taste. I, I think it might not be for everyone, but I fully agree with Dani that the soft Greek uh, on the windows uh, and the woodwork is what makes this room like really stand out. So I'm going to turn my camera again and I will let you have a look. So here we are. I'm going to try to stay away from the windows because the light is a bit difficult. There we go. So um, this is the pink uh, walls with the um, uh, nutmeg powder cornices and the soft Greek window. It's difficult to see the soft Greek because it's so bright outside now. I'll, I'm going to turn the camera a bit like this. Um, where of course the soft flamingo 
uh, and the uh, cornice work is the uh, classical paint. The windows uh, are the the Greek, uh, no, sorry, the traditional paint, and then the the soft Greek on the doors is also the traditional paint. Uh, the historic features in the ceiling also have um, the nutmeg powder finish, and um, I'm going to show you the little fireplace as well. And I think uh, working with the interior concept for this room with these colors were really fun. And I think what Agnes says about uh, having to daring to be a bit brave and then combining something really classical and really modern, I really enjoy. Um, like putting a really modern uh, ceiling pendant uh, onto the uh, old ceiling rows. And then also I got a reclaimed um, fireplace around, but then a little uh, Norwegian modern design classic of a, uh, a wood burning stove and then loads of bespoke joinery. So um, I also quite like if I'm going to show you that view, the combination of um, the colors when you leave the doors open. So I think it's really important when you uh, work with different colors on each side of the door to consider the fun thing that happens when you suddenly have a bright yellow door into your uh, pink room. So those were the living rooms. I think um, there's a tiny little bit of a delay. Uh, so I'm not sure if I'm getting the right questions in the right rooms, uh, but I will now take you upstairs and then as we're walking up the staircase, I must remember to uh, show you the old staircase because this is uh, one of the historic features that we did manage to keep. So this staircase is over 100 years old um, and uh, it is painted in a paint quality called uh, Carazzo which is suitable for um, for timber floors. So if you want to paint your timber floors, you can paint this. Here we stripped uh, stripped off all the old paint of the staircase and then we painted it in uh, this deep green color called Black Hills. I think it's very, very important to note that this is not black because black would have been way too um, hard. So, I'm gonna knock on uh, Storm's door. He promised that he would um, let me in. Uh, he's of course doing homeschooling or something. So let me see, two seconds. Storm? Wanna come in? Yeah. Do you wanna tell people about your room? Mm. Or can I come in and show them? Okay. Mm. So this is Storm's room. So I'm going to step back, it's very bright here too. Um, so when we worked with Dagny, she said, well, of course, everyone's allowed to, you have to like the colors, even though she said you have to be bold. And then both Storm and Odin, they, um, they got to uh, name which colors they liked. And Storm said, I really like purple. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. So his, uh, his room is uh, painted in uh, mauve love. That's the purple one, so which you can see here also above his uh, bunk bed and uh, partly poetic blue. And I really like the poetic blue color. It's a color that goes with almost everything. Uh, so the walls are mauve, uh, poetic blue and mauve love. And then it's the, uh, the sea moss green that is on the inside. So Tante Lisa see a high stone. <laughs> and then I'm going to have a little look under your desk because we also painted the radiator um, in the same color as the wall, the old classic radiators. Uh, so yeah, so he got his favorite colors and I think it's a really lovely and calm um, color combination. Uh, and also, of course, he can see the Marrakesh finish through his little window above the door. Um, so that was Storm's room. I'll show you the boys' bathroom. Um, I think, uh, so the boys got to choose their bathroom um, uh, fixtures. So they went for black, as in black taps, black uh, shower, blah, 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 because that's probably what Batman would have chosen. Uh, so we decided to come up with a color scheme that would go with that. And 
It'll help turn the camera around again. Oop, there we go. So um, this is their bathroom. So the walls are uh, lagoon water. So it's a really, really, really soft uh, light blue. And then, <laughs> there I am. And then um, we went for a blue tile and very interestingly, and I love this, we found a green grout that uh, perfectly matches the, um, uh, the sea moss of the, uh, of the woodwork. So this paint quality is also obviously the lechetto, which is washable and is therefore uh, good for um, bathrooms. Well then, <laughs> okay, I think... Oh, and I forgot to say that also, I think the nice thing about the bathroom is that the mirror will always bring the colour that is outside into that room because it's always obviously almost always open. Uh, okay, I'm going to take you upstairs to my youngest son's bedroom and I think he's very excited that he's having loads of visitors. Um, hold on. Odin, can we come in? Yeah. Okay. So Odin... He is the one that said when uh, Dangni. Okay, so yeah, I made the bed nicely this morning. Um, but anyway, so when uh, when Dangni asked, "What is uh, your favorite color? What color do you want in your room?" What did you say, Odin? I said electric blue. But you can give me both. Green. Yeah. So he said uh, electric blue. So. Um, uh, and then we thought, wow, electric blue, that's a bit intense for a bedroom. Uh, so uh, Dangni suggested this wonderful uh, colour palette of the um, sea moss walls and then the kiwi white ceiling, which is definitely not as hard as a white. And then the uh, adding the electric blue in the little hidden ceiling uh, bit. So I'm going to walk out here and show you how that actually looks for real. So basically, when we did a loft extension, we had to lower the ceiling in this floor. And in order to lower the ceiling, uh, we needed to do something clever in order to not uh, interfere with the traditional window. So I decided to create this little hidden nook up here, which obviously um, it's a fun place to put a swing and I always think you should try to add as much fun as possible when you design for families because uh, living in a house should be fun. Um, and then of course it was a great opportunity to use that yeah. blue, which is, I mean, it's just such an amazing blue. I'm going to go but back. No, I don't. Here you can see it quite a lot better. It's The colour is amazing, as in it. Uh, it radiates. It's really, really, really beautiful. Okay, so now I'm going to leave this piano concert. I said, I said we should have, I said we um, needed to, um, I wanted an electric room, but you guys give me buggy green. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the green, I think, uh, Odin calls it bogey green, I think it's one of the best green colours I've ever seen and it is the um, sea moss that we uh, have got on all the doors in the hallway and it goes with, I think it also, it's one of those colours that goes with almost everything, it, the polar blue and the sea moss, I think are the ones that you can combine with pretty much everything. So now I'm going to take you up to the loft uh, and that part was not, that was just an attic when we bought the house. So I'm going to show you very quickly the, um, uh, that's where the staircase ended. So this was the top landing and then um, uh, we added a new staircase. So this is Douglas fir. So I, I really believe that timber is a neutral and you can work with uh, loads of different untreated timber or just oiled or, or varnished with a slight pigment next to all these colors uh, because it's such an easy um, uh, it's like such an easy backdrop for for bold color schemes and then you can also see here how the uh, tadelakt uh, like 
uh, Marrakesh wall finish really catches the light and up here it's so bright right now so the the light really really shines on the wall so I'm going to take you um, all the way up so this was uh, just a like an unused uh, attic in, into the into the ceiling joists so we lifted the ceiling towards the garden uh, because this is a conservation area uh, oh it's really brighter isn't it because it's a conservation area you're not allowed to uh, change the facade to the street so the street uh, frontage should be historic but one of the things that we really um, uh, like doing is to so I'm just going to close that for now uh, to try to let as much light in as possible. So obviously you can see the light coming in from behind me. And then one of my tricks was I've got a little light, internal lights into the bathroom so that I can get the morning sun into my shower uh, in the morning. So this is uh, the master bedroom, uh, which Stanley showed a photo of when she went through the uh, color scheme. And when she came with that dark, dark, dark green, uh, I was a slightly hesitant because I thought maybe like a dark bedroom was a bit goth and I'm not particularly goth. Um, it reminds me of the period where everyone wants to um, paint their room black when you're little. Uh, but uh, again, I think it works really well. Um, and uh, this is a very small bedroom because it's in, in the loft, so it's definitely a place where, you know, you just sleep and read your book and that's it. Uh, and also it's got large windows, so there's loads of light coming in on days like this. So I'm going to take you in. So, here we go. So you can see that the colours are incredibly dark it's definitely not black and i have to be a bit careful when i'm walking in here with the camera because we've got large windows uh to the view here uh, and the contrast gets uh, really intense so it makes everything else turn white i think it's my mobile camera that can't really handle it you can see here the shape of the of the uh of the old roof and then we're using uh, using the, the the shapes to fit fit the bed in. And then I'm going to walk backwards in like this. And then you can see look into a little walk in uh, wardrobe, which again has the polar blue. And then you can see the hallway on the outside with the Marrakesh catching the light and the little uh, window uh, that gets the morning light into the into the bathroom. Um, and then, let me see, I'm going to turn around. Uh, another thing I learned from Dongne in this process uh, was that if you have warm colours in your bathroom, you will never need Botox. So obviously having a pink and beige bathroom uh, will allow you to stay younger, look, look younger, longer. So you can uh, see for yourself. Basically, the bathroom is, um, it's old rose in the Marrakesh finish, and then it's, um, uh, and then it's uh, 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 varnished with a, with a wax to take the humidity. And then the ceiling uh, and walls are um, nutmeg powder, which is actually the same color as the, uh, as the, ceiling rose in the main bedroom and of course because this is a bathroom the walls are uh, in the lichetto finish which is the wipeable paint so i really love also how these super soft colors sorry the, the light is hard but the pink and the beige also really goes with the um the con cast concrete sink which i uh which i really wanted so that is it and then we've got the tiny little uh, walk-in wardrobe underneath the eaves so i think working with historic properties is to make sure that you use absolutely um every every corner so yeah so again the colors up here are quite a few so i actually hadn't counted but Dani said it's 16s in total so up here we've got the black hills the polar blue the nutmeg powder and the old rose Marrakesh finish up there. And then I turn it around the corner 
and then it's in the hallway. It's the uh, uh, the sea moss ceiling, and then the green room Marrakesh finish. So that is the tour. Um, we were obviously. I suggested to Iris that I could host, you know, uh, launch drinks when she launched her color campaign. And then uh, obviously lockdown in London prevented that, but by the numbers I can see on the screen, I see that loads of people join that wouldn't have been able to, to join. Um, uh, so thank you for watching. It's been uh, an absolute pleasure to work with Koi Color Studio and uh, Pure and Original Paints on this project. And at Collective Works, we've actually had the pleasure of already specifying Pure and Original Paints on some new projects. Uh, because our clients have seen how uh, wonderful they are. Um, so if you have any questions about architecture, you contact me. Uh, if you want to learn more about colour, of course, Koi Colour Studio is the place to go. And then uh, on a Pure and Originals webpage, so www.pure-original.com, there is a list of all um, international retailers. So I obviously got all these colors from the London retailers, but they sell um, everywhere. Uh, and Iris is always there uh, with a breadth of knowledge um, uh, to answer any questions. So thank you for watching. Have a lovely day, everyone. Thank you.